I should give tonight. I know that those. Uh, don't waste your money. I promise you. It goes to that go to me. So we, we just do what God's called us to do with it. And uh, things like, well, right now, things like uh, water lines and metal stuff. So a lot of it goes to that stuff. Amen. How many brought your Bible tonight? Amen. Something that has a Bible on it? Cool. If you have your Bible, Brother Daniel, you ready? I'll put you to the test here. Ethan's going to have to help you. Ready? Ezekiel, you ready? Go. Is that old or new? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37. Start with verse 1 through 10. Are you guys ready to have a good time? Listen, y'all are all serious. What's up? Ezekiel. Becky's the only one not? Becky's all giddy. Becky's all giddy. That's better. Amen. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. Are you guys ready? How ready are you? Oh, my stars. Did y'all get a nap or anything today? I mean, holy cow. Let's go, man. All right, ready? The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of what? Wow. Bones. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in an open valley, and lo, they were what? Dry. Very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, I don't know. That's what he said, huh? And, and, he, and he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say to them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5. And thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter to you, and ye shall And I will lay sinews upon, upon you, and will bring upon flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews of the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Verse 9. And then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Last one. Someone said, Thank you, Lord. So I prophesied as, the, as he commanded me, and the breath came unto, unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Let's pray for just a minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise. I give you honor in the house. I thank you for every person that is in this building today. And thank you for those that came back tonight to be in the house of the Lord. God, I appreciate their efforts and I appreciate their sacrifice to be in the house of the Lord. I thank you, God, that we are able to break your word down and open up your word and, and bless those with the word, God, that are here. God, I ask that you move by your power, your spirit, and anointing like <laughs> never before and help us, God, to understand, conceive, and realize what it is that you're trying to tell us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Uh, if, you are, if you're looking for a title, it's time to speak again. Time to speak again. This, this morning, as I was preaching about Achan, I, as I was studying that out, I had never really realized, <coughs> I'd listened to the story before, and, and Billy preached a message one time, Forsaken the Bacon. And that was about Achan. I don't know, but that's what he titled it. Okay? And, and so I, I didn't title it, he did. And I've heard that story preached forever, and I never realized that it was just, a, a, it was the story wasn't about Achan and, and so much, it was about what God does to sin. And, I, and how God eradicates sin, and God gets it off the earth, and God cleanses it from our bodies, and, and cleanses it from our spirit. Is she okay, Mark? If she needs to sit in my office, that's fine. Okay. Um, and how God takes sin and God eradicates it and, and destroys it and, and just absolutely 
devastates it, and, and there's, no, there's no residue of it. And I never really realized that until I was reading the story how, how Achan, uh, they, they not only stoned him, but they burned him and stoned him again and laid a heap over them, and, and it was not seen, and it was not spoken of, and it was taken care of. And so as, as I was dealing with that, I never really realized that God was so serious about sin. I know I just read Ezekiel, but i got to finish that up. That sin is so detrimental to you that it angers God so much that He absolutely wipes it clean. We don't think about God being angry because we don't think it's righteous for us to be angry. But God got angry a lot. God continues to get angry over sin. Is he angry at you? No. He loves you. He cares for you. Does all that stuff, but sin angers God. Why? Here's why. I, I didn't, man, I, I'm not preaching that. I'm preaching this. But I can't get away from it. Here's why. Let's say, for example, somebody came and attacked one of my daughters right now. They had a knife, they had a gun, they had something they were going to kill my daughter. If I didn't do something to stop it, one of my daughters was were, they were going to die right now. If I didn't stop it, I would not be like, oh, you silly goose with a knife. You silly willy. It would be attack them before they could kill my child. It would be put myself in harm's way to make sure they are out of harm's way. And the anger that I would have towards somebody who, who struck my child with a knife or with a gun would be overwhelming to me. And that's an earthly father and an earthly child. Can you imagine how God feels about how sin attacks your life and tries to destroy you and kills you and breaks your family apart and breaks you apart. He does everything he can to stop it. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 37. It's time to speak again. How many in here have dreams? Not that you have like you sleep and have a dream and whatever. I'm talking about you. Like Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. I have a dream. Okay. Right? God wants you to have dreams. There's a, there's a preacher uh, that, I, that I like. His name is David Crank. And David preaches, he preached a message the other day. And as he was preaching, he said this statement. He said, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people do what? But he said, this is how I always put it in my spirit. Where the, there is no vision, the people go to another parish. Because there's no vision in the house. And so can I ask you a question? Can your dreams that you have, can they live? What is it you want to have in your life? Do you want a marriage that you would say, I, I, I love my, my spouse and, and have a marriage that not, it's not always perfect, but it's good. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can you have a relationship with your co-workers? And can you have relationships with people? Can you have a relationship with your children that may not be perfect, but at least it's good? And so can you have a dream of having something different in your life than what you have now? Because most people don't say, well, my dream is to continue on just like I am because everything is good and just like I want it. Most people have dreams of doing something else. Most people have a dream of, of, of being something that they're not. Most people have a dream of, of, of touching somebody else's life in another way. Most people have dreams of doing greater. Nobody, nobody ever says, my dream is to do less than I've ever done. That's not anybody's ever dream. They don't ever dream that. You know, uh, you never hear anybody prophesy over anybody and say, thou shalt do us less. And less and less. Doors shall shut and no windows shall open. I never heard that. I've, always, I've heard some Captain Obvious. Doors will open for you. Duh. Got it. Yeah. 
If you give, God will give to you. Got it. I know. That's what it says. I got it. I've heard some of those. Generic, throw it out. But I, but most cases, people don't speak over somebody and say, Thou art not going to do anything the rest of your life. Go to a hole and die. Nobody ever does that. And nobody's, nobody's dream is ever to go do nothing and just lay down and die. That's nobody's dream. And if it is, you have more issues than I can deal with right now. Your dream should be reaching for the next horizon. What's behind that horizon? Another horizon. It should be reaching for the, reaching for the greatest thing that you can ever reach for. And once you achieve it, reaching for something else. I'm not saying not to be content with what you have. I'm saying always strive for greater. Always strive for something. So can your dreams live? I think that they can. Can your future live? What is your future? Well, I hope that your future is that you, you serve Jesus until He comes. You make heaven your home. I hope that's in your future. But what is your future that you're striving for? What is it you want tomorrow? Do you want tomorrow? Do you want the same thing tomorrow as you had Friday? Or do you want more of God? Do you want more of what's going on in, 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 the, in the spirit of your life? Has God given you, has God given you a, an avenue to say, this is, what I, this is where I want you to go? And yes, at times you're going to have a struggle, but here's where I want you to go. And this is what I want you to do. And I want you to do this. I want you to have a future. Come on, somebody. Y'all yeah. quiet. I know. The head nod every now and then. This is this every, every day. This every now and then. Can your future live? I'm very blessed to have four children that I love very much. And when I'm gone, and by way of the grave, my future lives on. My legacy lives on. What I put in them lives on. Amen. My future can live. What is your future? What do you want? It's time to speak again. Amen. Well, I, when's the last time you spoke into your own life? When's the last time you put oil on your own hand and put it on your own head? Amen. Amen. So I shall live and I shall not die. Amen. I shall do greater than I've ever done and go further than I've ever gone. Amen. I shall live for God and I will not turn my I will not turn around or go back. When's the last time you spoke into your own life? When's the last time? You, well, that's just weird, brother. <coughs> weird or not, it works. Yeah. I, I just, when's the last time you spoke God's word into your life and infused your spirit with God's word? Amen. When's the last time you remembered that somebody spoke a word? Not, I'm talking about some showman that, that was juggling balls and spinning plates and trying to get people to give an offering. I'm talking about somebody that actually had a word from God and spoke it into your life and they had no idea what was going on. I've heard Sherlock Pink bring people up here and say four years ago, and it was exactly four years ago, yeah. stuff started happening in their life. And he said, four years ago, this happened, this happened, this happened. And I'm like, I didn't tell him. Yeah. I'm talking about somebody who knows and can speak into your life. Amen. Listening to the Spirit of God. <clears throat> I, I'm just, I just, I, I, I'm talking about somebody, and you remember what they said. And you said, God, you spoke into my life, and you said that, that by this time, I would have this and that, and I'm believing that, and I'm standing on that, and I'm believing. I'm speaking life into my dry bones of my life. Amen. Have you ever felt dry? Amen. I feel dry. Listen. 
Yeah. Speak into the lives of your children. I have four kids that I love dearly. I don't love them as much as I love their mom. Sorry, girls. No. Y'all are knuckleheads. I don't love you as much as I love God. But I love you more than you would ever know. More than I could ever express. More than I could ever say. More than any song could ever tell you. I love you. But I love your mom more. And I love God more. But I'm still speaking into your lives. You don't even know. But I speak into your lives. I speak into your life when you're sleeping. I speak into your lives when you don't have any idea that I opened the door and walked into your room. I speak into your lives when I'm praying on, on Sundays. and I speak into your life. Because I believe that God has ordained you for greatness and I'm not going to let you spend it in mediocrity. I, I speak into your life because you're my children. I speak life into you. I, I speak dreams into your life. I speak your future into your life. I speak God's word into your life even when you don't know, but you don't have to know. Because God knows. Speak into the lives of those that you love. I walk the aisles of this church and I speak life into you. I speak financial blessing into your life. I speak health into your life. I speak all the things that we need in our life. I speak a, a breakthrough in whatever area that I know of. If I don't know, I always say, God, God, you see what they're going through. And God touched their lives. And God, I don't know. Unless God reveals it to me, I can't tell you. But I do know this this morning when I was preaching that, that message that God told me. There wasn't an audible voice. He didn't come stand here and go, ooh, I'll show you. It wasn't that. But in my spirit, God spoke to me and said, there's folks that I'm about to expose. And if they'll take care of it now, nobody will ever know. But somebody's about to come to the house. And it's not just going to be your family. But if you'll repent of it and get it away from you, God will take it away and out of your life. And I don't even have a clue who I'm talking to. And you may not be here tonight. Maybe you're just here this morning. But I will tell you this. That God didn't give me a message. Listen, you know what the difference between a sermon and a message is? A sermon is a book report on what God said. A message is something God spoke to your heart. Amen. I can give you a sermon out of the Book of Mormon. Come on. I, can give, I have a Koran in my office. I can give you a sermon out of there. No, you can't. <laughs> I can give you a book report. I won't. But I could. I can give you a book report over doorknobs. Water bottles. Glasses. Walkers. Neck braces. I can preach you three points in a poem over anything that you can name, any object. I preached long enough. I can give you three points in a poem over anything. Live switches. Kleenex boxes. Kleenexes. There's nothing. I don't want to give you a sermon. I want to give you a message and a word. Amen. Another difference between sermons and messages is what's on it. What do you mean what's on it? The anointing on it. The difference. There's a difference. I've heard messages and I've heard sermons. Sermons make me sleepy. Yeah. Messages make me sit and lean in. I lean in. What did God say? Messages challenge me. Sermons remind me. Messages 
challenge my spirit. They make me inward and self and reflect. They make me dig things out of my out of my spirit and go. You know what? That's right. Sermons make me go. Okay, how many times are you gonna preach on David and Goliath? Okay, a rock hit him. Yeah, we got it. But when there's a message about the rock, uh -huh. I'll lean in. Yeah. Y'all with me? Amen, brother. Okay. Can these things live? Can your, can your life live? Yes. Can your dreams live? Yes. Can your future live? Yes. In Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Ready? And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What kind of flesh? All. Not just Christians? All. Hmm. All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall do what? And your young men shall do what? And your old men shall? Hmm. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Wow. I love when Paul says, I speak in tongues more than all y'all. Big deal. Yeah. But here's the deal. I would rather that you prophesy. You have to remember, this was still in the days when you were a false prophet, they would kill you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Speaking to them, Give them the gift of prophecy that they'll know. Speaking to them, your sons and your daughters are not second class. Well, they don't even know what to do. No, no, no. Okay, I, I want to ask a question, and I want to. Uh, this is something I didn't realize anybody else had ever done this in their life until I heard Billy Brim speaking about it the other day. And for me, the other day could have been two years ago, but yes, the other day. How many know who Billy Brim is? Okay. Have you? Were you a kid? And you were laying in bed, and you, and you ever see like clothes move in your closet and stuff? <laughs> Serious? No? Yes, some? Really? You remember? I remember distinctly. I, I remember distinctly. And, and and they would move, and they would they would. I was wide awake. I wasn't dreaming. Now, were they really moving? I don't know. But I'm just saying that. I remember distinctly being three, four, five years old and seeing things in the closet. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't Monsters Inc. Uh, Sully wasn't coming through. Okay, uh, it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't that I was scared. I didn't scare me. I just saw things move. Okay, and, and I, I had never heard anybody else. I've never shared that with anybody. My wife doesn't even know that she's a nursery, honey. The Lord loves you. Okay, but my, I've never shared that with anybody, so I decided that I would share with my closest hundred friends. And uh, whatever. But I, I have I remember that distinctly, and I heard her speaking about it, and she said that it has been documented that those many many kids have have seen that, and we dismiss that as oh they're just having nightmares or they're just having having bad dreams or oh they were just um, you know they're just kids and they're scared and all that I can testify to you I wasn't dreaming I wasn't scared and I wasn't asleep and she said what happens is this is God you, you see things in the spirit and it's that it's the spirit that moves not the clothing and we dismiss and it's just because we're kids and we're looking at whatever but, it, but she said we dismiss that as, oh, they're just kids. Yeah. Ooh, come on, so come on. But the problem is that they are not second class citizens just because they're young. Right. 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 God still deals with their hearts yes, and God still deals with their spirits. Yes. They don't know how to verbalize it. Right. They don't know how to say what's going on. But God is dealing with them, and I believe this, that our sons and our daughters are, are full of the Holy Ghost and full of the, full of the power of God. And some, some of God are, is dealing with in a different way. It's the 
same age when I saw the face of God smile at me from heaven, from earth, from the sky. Remember I've told you that story, right? Yeah. It's on the swing set. Looked up, face, crown, eyes, and a mouth, smile, freaked out, ran to get mama. Came back and it was gone. Oh, that was just a cloud in the shape of a... No. I know what I saw. And I know what it felt like. And I know what it was. Amen. It scared me to death. Because I was about three or four years old. Yeah. I ran in the house to get my mom. His mom would know how to fix it, right? It was gone. What are you saying, Brother Jeff? What I'm saying is this. Here's the deal. We can't dismiss our sons and daughters when they say things like, we have to, you know, like, God spoke to me. Don't dismiss that. Don't dismiss that. Give them an audience to, to share that. Let them... Listen to what they have. They don't. Oh, God didn't say that. How do you know? How do you know? Give them an audience. Give them a place that they can share out of their spirit what God is saying to them. Not. I, I didn't say that when they say, "Well, God said I was going to get thirteen tootsie rolls for supper." Okay, have a little wisdom. Okay, but if it's something spiritual, it's something. Yo, there's no way they made that up. Use a little wisdom, but give them an audience. Your, your sons and daughters are not second class. They are called by God. Oh, come on, somebody. Are your, are your children called by God or are they just sucking up air somebody else can use? They're called. They're chosen by God. They are, they are important to the kingdom of God. They're not just simply sucking up air and using water. They are absolutely, they are needed by God. So my, my question to you is, isn't it time to speak again into our lives, into our children, into our futures? Isn't it time to speak again into our lives and what God has done and what God's doing? Listen, it's time to speak into the church again. We shall go forward. We shall not ever go back. That's right. We're looking forward. We're looking down the road. We're not looking back behind us saying, oh, man, we, we should have taken a left turn. Too bad. We took a right. Now we have to go around the block. Whatever. We, listen, quit looking back and saying, oh, we should have done it, should have done it, should have done First Corinthians chapter 14. I was at a minister's conference this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I went Thursday and Friday. Saturday I had to come home at a wedding. And Billy um, was speaking at it. He made a comment and made this, this true. Made me laugh. He said, if I ever use the same scriptures, Melissa always says, you've already preached that. <laughs> He's like, dude, I just used the scripture. Leave me alone. And so I probably have used these scriptures a hundred times. Doesn't mean I've already preached it, all right? Uh, First Corinthians, I'm in the wrong place here. I'm trying to get there, sorry. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5. Ready? Follow after charity or love. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5. Boom. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Mm. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How, how be it? In the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men in edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather ye prophesy for for greater is he that, proph that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret, that the church may receive edifying. Amen. It's time to speak into the church again. Amen. Yes. Yes. What does that mean? Every time there's a silence and somebody needs to jump up and give a, a, a word in tongues? No. No. I've been in church a long time. I know that stuff. That someone just can't wait. Okay, as soon as this song's over, and now. 
And it, sometimes it's of the Lord, and sometimes it's of the person. Right. right? right. And Brother Al Beck told me one time he was in Alaska, and, and a lady got up, and she's new to the church, and people had been speaking in tongues and interpreting, and uh, she, the native lady, she didn't really understand what was going on, and she got up, and, and she gave a little message in tongues and interpreted herself and said, the Lord said, hang in there, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's really from the Lord, but uh, it was, she tried, amen? Her heart, her heart was in the right place. Speak the word, speak the word of God into your church. Amen. Okay. I'm going to ask you something really deep. Okay. Do you, do you like your church? Yes, sir. I hope so. Do you love attending your church? Okay. I hope so. I want God to do more for you than He's ever done for you in your life. I need to start speaking that into you. Jade has an issue, an issue that she, she, God has to intervene in the issue. I pray for her all the time. Like, she has an issue that, that she, only God can intervene in. Only God. And so I need to speak into her life and tell her, and, and I know that some folks have spoken into your life and I appreciate that. But, I, but we need to speak into our, each other's lives and say, God, I need a word for my church. I need a word. God speaks word unto his people. He speaks the word into your life. Do you, I, I heard Brother Daryl say today that he reads his Bible out loud, and, and I know that Buddy did that as well. And, and they, because hearing, you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And I'm not going to say I always read the Word of God out loud. I don't. Uh, most most of my reading is done uh, silently in, in, in the early mornings, and so I don't read it out loud a lot. But uh, I think that God speaks into your life through His Word. You don't have to have somebody say, thus saith the Lord right. over you. Right. Because I have a thus saith the Lord yeah. in front of me. I, I have this. I'm not saying that, that God won't do that. But I'm, what I'm saying is that God is able to speak into my life in a, in a special, amazing way by just simply saying, read my word. Amen. Read it. Study yourself to be approved. Study that you show yourself to be approved. That you're not ashamed. What does the Bible have to say about the situation you're going through? What does God's Word have to say about your health? What does God's Word have to say about your marriage? What does God have to say about your children? What does God's Word have to say about miracles and wonders and signs that God wants to do in your life? What does God's Word have to say about it? It always has something to say. Amen. But the problem is... We have it. But the effort to open it. The effort it takes to read it. Oh, I'll have to get up at 5.30 instead of 6. Speak to me in a dream, God. The God's like, no. No. I gave you your answer. I gave your answer. Seek God for His Word for your life. What is it that God has in your life? What is it that God wants to do for you in your life? Where is it that God's taking you? Do you know? Okay, listen. Listen. Don't be someone who just floats through life. You're not really doing anything. You're just kind of floating. There's no plan. There's no vision. There's no desire to do it. You're just kind of living one day at a time. Woo, thank God I got through that day. I'm so glad this day is over. Whoever said that? We've all said it. But what does that mean? That means I'm one step closer. That day is, I'll never get that day back. Never. You can't 
just go through life letting life happen to you. Right. You've got to do something. Right. What is it that God has for your life? Have you, have you prayed and sought God and said, God, show me what you would have me to do? Man, it's quiet in this church. This, this Presbyterian church is killing me tonight. Listen, hey, listen, I'm telling you. What is it that God would have you to do? Where is it he would have you to go? What, is it, what would he have you to do to minister? Because we're all called to be ministers somehow. Who is it that God's called you to reach? Who is it that God has called you? Where is it God? Where is your mission field? Where is it that God has placed you and planted you? Yeah. Amen. Well, I don't, I, I don't really have one. Yes, you do. You just haven't asked. And you haven't gone on that journey. See God for His Word for your life. What is it that God wants you to do? Well, I feel like God wants me to go to Zimbabwe. I think you need to hold up on that there, killer. Because there's some folks across the street that don't even know you're a Christian. Amen. But you can go halfway around the world. Amen, brother. Yeah. I, I wanna, God wants me to be something. Else. A singer. Hold up there, chief. It's not very good. It's not very good. God wants me to be a musician. Can you play anything? No! But God wants me to do Okay? Hold up on that until you learn how to play something. Amen? Maybe God wants you to be the best chair stacker that's ever stacked a chair. There ain't nothing wrong with that, baby. I'll stack chairs all day long. Maybe God wants you to find, get somebody behind somebody and push them and say, you got this, you got this, you got... Maybe God wants you to speak into their lives and say, I know the devil's fighting you, but I'm praying for you. Yes. Oh, I know there's not a microphone that comes with that. But you need people that stack chairs. You need people who wash off tables. You need people that go get ice and get waters and they go do so. you got to have those people and those people have a what reward? A prophet's reward. Come on. What does it say? Beautiful are the feet of those who carry this gospel. And I'm telling you, you can't carry the gospel without somebody stacking chairs. Somebody's got to do it. You don't get anywhere without somebody vacuuming carpet. Aren't you glad when you go to the restroom? There's toilet paper and paper towels in there. Angels don't come and put them in there. They're not holy rollers. <laughs> Somebody took them out of a box. Somebody put them on the roll. Somebody closed it up. Somebody said, I'm going to serve my church. I'm going to serve my people. I'm going to serve God's people. Somebody had to do that. Amen. Aren't you glad? There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I'm, I'm just nothing. I, just, I don't do anything in the church. I, yeah, yeah, you do. You do. How many like getting a birthday card from the church? Amen. I didn't send it. I didn't know when your birthday is. But somebody did. And I'm not going to tell you who. They can tell you they want to. Somebody sent it. Why? It's what to serve. That's right. And there's nothing wrong with serving. That's right. Everybody wants a microphone. Nobody wants to put chairs out. Aren't you glad 1977 they bought pews? Aren't you glad 1999 they redid them? So you can pick the veneer off of them and heat it. It's just God's house. I'll just pick the veneer off of it. It's not your pew. Anyway, okay, listen. Open a Bible every once in a while. Amen. Quit filling your mind with 
Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I watch people and I go, are you really this juvenile? I watch 50 year old people fight over something that doesn't matter, hill of beans on Facebook. Because you know, everybody's all tough behind the keyboard. <laughs> watch people just act like complete idiots. You go, you're 50 years old, and yet you need your tail end whipped. Yeah. Amen. You need your pants pulled down and a belt on your tail end. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Some of the trash and some of the nonsense. Why do you fill your mind with that trash? I don't understand. I just block. I don't care. I don't know. Listen, I'm not here to be your friend, so I don't I listen to that. He unfollowed me. Yeah, because you're... Anyway, I followed you. Okay. Yeah. Don't fill your mind with mindless opinions on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And hashtag no filter. Hashtag lie. You never look that good in your life. Your eyes don't sparkle like that. Ridiculous. Expect to have God's peace in your life. How do you expect to have God's peace in your life? We never put God's peace in your life. How do you expect to have God's joy in your life when you don't have any joy because you don't even know what this thing says about joy? Right. Oh, some of us know the song. It's joy and joy on and full of full of full of. It's joy unspeakable and half has never yet been. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplies every need. Come on, somebody. Right. It's in your red hymnal right in front of you. Joy unspeakable. But what do you know about it? Do you know that's a scripture? They, they wrote that song off of a scripture. Amen. That's why I like some of the hymnal songs so much better than I like some of the other songs. Because they, they, they preach the gospel in four four time. Or 6-8. Six, 6-8 eight. Six, is hard to play. Anyway, it's anyway, it matter. It preaches the gospel. It speaks the word into your spirit. The songs that I grew up on. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Right? Yeah. Higher ground? Higher ground. It's page 75 in the old book. I don't know what it is now. I love that song. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Oh. Yeah. Woo! Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by grace on heaven's table land. Oh. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I have no desire to stand. Oh. I gotta go. My wife's grandma would sing that song and I was always like, yes! I love that song. But those songs fill my spirit. I can't help myself. I'll just, I'll just, my, my wife is amazing. She just, you just sing, she always tells me, you're not singing it right. <laughs> deedle, deedle, dee, deedle, dee works when you don't know the words. Okay? God understands. Diddle, diddle, lee, diddle, lee. Whatever it was, it was the same. I may not know all the words, but God does. And He knows my heart, right? Alright. And she's like, she's like, that's not right. So, oh yeah? Sing an eagle song. You don't know. I critique you, because you don't know. It speaks life into me. And now it knows every song ever. <laughs> and she gets them right. How do you know that? All four verses. How do you know that? Without even looking. How do you know? I, that's why we have books so I can read it. <laughs> and so I don't have a clue. But those words bring life to me. Can these bones live? I don't know. 
Ezekiel said, I don't know. God, you know, but I don't know. And God said, I want you to do something for me, boy. Speak to them. I can do that. Live. He didn't have a magic wand to go, Abra could never live. Didn't do that. He just spoke and God said, I'm going to call the four winds. And I'm going to put flesh on them. And I'm going to breathe breath into them. And they're going to live. And put my scripture up there for me. Ezekiel 37 and 10. And he put it all together. And it came together. And in your life, it may be dry. And you may think there's no way I can make it through this. You may think there's no way I'm going to, I'm going to persevere through this. But God says, so I, I mean, Ezekiel says, so I prophesied as he commanded. And breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Church, I'm going to share this with you, and I'm shutting up. Here's the deal. If you will speak into your life as he has commanded you. Amen. He will breathe breath into your life. Amen. Come on, somebody. I need somebody to understand what I'm telling you. Amen. He will breathe breath into your dreams, into your future, into the things that God has spoken into your life. Well, it's never going to come to pass, Brother Jeff. No, it won't, prophet, because you just prophesied it won't. But what did God say? Did God call you? Yes. Did God speak this into your life? Yes. Then quit saying He's not going to do it. And start saying, thank you God for doing it. And as, listen, so I prophesied as He commanded, and breath came into them. What? The dead, dry bones of that field, that valley. And they came into them, and they lived, and they did what? They did more than live. What did they do? Stood up on their feet. And they were an exceedingly great army. Can I tell you, the last thing I'm saying to this is this. What does God say about you and your family? What does God say about you and your family and your, and your future? What does He say? He tells you to speak to it. Breathe. Let Him breathe into it. Let it come alive inside of you. Aren't you just a little bit tired? Amen. Of the devil always telling you no. When God gave you a yes. Amen. Preacher said one time, he, his daughter said, I've never told my daughter no. And his mom, her mama's told her no a lot. <laughs> I've never told her no in her life. That has one daughter. One the kid he has. I've never told her no. Her mama tells her no. And I say to her, I know I have to give it to you, but your mama said no. <laughs> he said, I know it's not right. He said, my wife gets on to me. He says, why would you say that to her? Because what she's saying makes sense. <laughs> I, want her, I want her to have it. <laughs> so, no, you're not doing that. When God has given you a divine yes, <laughs> Quit listening to the devil's no. Amen. I said something this morning and I just went over it real fast. So many of us are so used to living in the desert. We've forgotten about God's promise of the promised land. Amen. The promised land is a whole lot better than the desert. Yes, it is. Amen. But it's easy to get comfortable in the desert. The promised land. Promised land is what God has called you to, yes. not the desert. Amen. You're going through the desert right. to get to the promised land. Amen. I'm not staying here. I'm, I'm going forward. Amen. Charles Johnson and the Rock Reviver said this way I'm going on with my Jesus, just the same. You can talk about me and scandalize my name, but I'm going on with my Jesus, just the same. Amen. Stand here for